have a time of prayer. And before we pray, let's confess before God. When we pray, God hears us. God hears our prayers, and God will definitely answer us. And maybe hold on to that faith as we pray. So at this time, let's pray together that we will receive God's word, that God would give us understanding of the answer He wants us to hold on to this week. At this time, let's pray together. continue to pray um, through today's message that Pastor John gave us uh, he mentioned about the doors that God wants to open in our fields to save people's souls it, the gospel is not just for us but God wants to save the whole world so may you at this time think about your field your school your friends your family and whatever else specific fields you have your workplaces May you at this time pray for God to open the doors of evangelism in your life. That God would use you to spread and share the gospel, the answer for our lives and, and the world's life. So let's pray together for our fields. Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So, um, I don't know how many of you guys know, but um, last week, Pastor Zhang and Pastor Masuda went to Ensenada to meet with the uh, disciples in Mexico, and I had the opportunity to, to go with them. Um, you know, Pastor Masuda just asked me, he's like, uh, if you're able to go, come, and I, was, and I really wanted to meet uh, the disciples. That was kind of my motivation. Uh, Want to meet the disciples that have been connected um, as they were continuously going back and forth um, to Mexico. And not only that, they are doing Zoom worship together. And I wanted to meet with them. So that was actually my kind of desire. And I really didn't have any other expectation, right? Um, I had no idea where I was going, actually. <laughs> you know, I've never been to Mexico. Um, I didn't know a lot of the people. I only recognized, you know, Pastor Josias and Pastor Ricardo. Um, so that was just the biggest thing in my mind, just going there to meet the disciples. But um, one of the prayers I held on to was, God, I have no idea what to expect, but when I go there, let me see what you want to show me. And that was the prayer I went in. I literally had no expectation, no plans, didn't know what exactly we're doing there. I just know... Disciples in Mexico are gathering, right, for, um, and to receive worship and training. Um, and so one of the things, when I actually got, of course, we listened to the, mess, uh, the videos, uh, reports of their mission, and about, you know, uh, all these doors opening. Um, but it's really different when you actually go to meet with the people. Um, I really start to see that they have a heart for God. They have a heart for evangelism to save souls. And you can tell there is something different about them, right? Uh, and that was very encouraging to me to see that. Not only that, um, but starting to see really like, wow, God is really working in Mexico. And for me, actually, what that really encouraged me to do or to have is I want that in America, right? Um, you know, doors are not really opening that much 
uh, in, in America. Well, well, through Pastor Ricardo, some of the churches are starting to be connected. But as far as my life, there's no real, like, doors opening, right? What about for you guys, right? You might feel the same way, actually, as me. Um, world evangelism is not really taking place. So today's title is The Door. And what door is that? It's the door to world evangelism, God's greatest desire. We want to do world evangelism, right? That's what we're constantly talking about, and we say we must be inside of world evangelism. But let me ask you realistically at this time, do you want to do world evangelism? What is, what is your answer to that? Just think inside your heart. Do I really want to do world evangelism? And the thing I want to share with you guys is I totally understand where you guys come from because if you guys don't really have any mind to do world evangelism, because I've been there, right? Um, really, for me, even though I went to seminary, even though I was born in a Christian family, uh, world evangelism was not my desire. It was, I, I told you guys before, I'm an introvert. You know, world evangelism, you have to go out and, and you know, share the gospel. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> do that. I know it's God's desire, but for me, I'm, I don't really want to do that. So I really understand where that comes from. Um, but we have to, first of all, Realize this is what God commanded us to do. Before it is just, you know, God's desire, uh, before it's just, a, you know, God's desire, but it's something that he commanded all of those who believe in him to do. So let's, uh, I'm going to read this for you. I don't think it's here. But Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So when I say it's God's command, right, what do we feel about that? Uh, for a lot of people, and I hear this here and there, and was the case for me too, was it becomes a burden, right? You know you have to do it, it's not taking place, and you start to feel stressed and anxious, and you know sometimes you're thinking about like, how can I do this? And it becomes your burden because you try to do it, right? When uh, I think I maybe shared with you guys before, um, my mom prayed while I was in her womb that I would become a pastor. So that was one thing I was constantly reminded of throughout my childhood hey, I prayed for you to become a pastor. <clears throat> and of course, I didn't want to be, right? Uh, and I would get stressed by that. And some, honestly speaking, I was very annoyed, right? Maybe you guys feel like that. When they, we say, you are the evangelist, you must be aligned to what God desires, world evangelism. But realistically, maybe you don't have the heart for that. And you're burdened by that. Yes, it needs to be our desire. yes. We need to go to the ends of the world to share the gospel. But before that happens, we need to have the heart. So what I told my mom, uh, as she's continuously saying, you're going to be a pastor, I'll be like, no, I'm not. <laughs> right? I'm not going to be a pastor. I don't want to be a pastor. But as I grew in my faith, right, I was still you know, in a Christian family, sharing the gospel, growing in my understanding of who is Christ, who is God, in my life, personally experiencing his blessings, his promise in my life. And one such instance was, uh, for example, you know, while I was at school, you know, there's exams and you're all, I'm all worried about that. And, you know, I'm a procrastinator, so obviously I don't have a lot of time and I haven't done much work. So I'm very stressed about this, right? And I remember very cur clearly, I was going up to my apartment and I could feel so heavy. As I'm walking up the stairs, I remember, oh, I should probably pray, right? So God gave me the heart to pray, and as I prayed, what did I pray? I said, God, I'm very anxious right now. I'm very worried about my studies. 
but I want to entrust this to you, God, please give me peace. And as the, at the very moment I ended that prayer, literally I experienced that peace in Christ. And that was like, like I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> you know, uh, what happened, right? So I'm like, wow, God is really working in my life. So in my childhood, I'm growing in my faith, in my understanding of God, but still I don't want to be a pastor. Or for you guys, maybe it's, I don't want to do world evangelism, right? Um, and so if my mom told me, she, one time she told me, again, hey, remember, you will be a pastor. I pray for you. This is, uh, was my prayer before you were born, before we had you. And I told her, I, if God wants me to be a pastor, he'll give me the heart. So stop telling me, <laughs> right? Stop, keep telling me I'll be a pastor. God, if God really wants it, he'll give me the heart. I still didn't have the heart at the time. But as I look back and, in, and at that moment, I realized that was, even though I didn't really have a heart for it, that was the beginning of my confession of faith. Right? Confession in, I want to do, I, uh, I wanna do what God wants. I don't have the heart right now, but if he really wants to do it, He'll give me the heart, then I'll do it. Right. So may you guys have that. If you guys don't really have a heart for a road evangelism right now, and just be honest about it, you know. Um, it's not to your benefit if you're, you're, you pretend that you have a heart for road evangelism. To have like an outward, so like people don't judge you or what it might be, whatever it might be. Be honest at least with your relationship with God. God already knows whether you have a heart for evangelism or not. Whether it's a small or whether you have a big heart for evangelism, God knows exactly what's inside of you. He knows our heart. So for you guys, right, maybe you were like me. Don't want to really do world evangelism right now. Not really want to think about that. You're more interested in something else. May you start to pray to God, God, if this is really what you want me to do, give me the heart. And God will give that to you. It took for me um, since that time about... Uh, like three to four years before I had the heart to become a pastor. Time doesn't matter. In God's perfect plan, uh, time schedule, he'll give you the heart for world evangelism. So don't even worry about, um, oh, I need to have the heart, or I need to have the world evangelism. Focus on God, uh, what God wants you to hold on to, which is, first, that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the answer for your life. As we come to understand this reality in our life, it is natural that we will have a heart for world evangelism. Because we know what the power of Christ is in our life. We know what he can do for the lives of all other people as well. And of course, we will want to share that to the world. So let's take a look. World evangelism, we say, is God's work, not our work, right? So let's take a look at what is God's work. Through today's passage, we learn about it. What is the purpose of God's work? What is the purpose of God's blessing in our life? You know, a lot of American churches will talk about, uh, you'll, you'll find peace in Christ, you'll find joy in Christ, He'll take up your burdens, right? He is always with you in all these things. But why? For what? They'll say, God loves you. God is love, right? It is true. But that's not the final purpose of those blessings in our life. Ultimately, God, what does God want us to do? What does God want to do through us is for us to stand as witnesses, witnesses of Christ, so let's see in Acts 2, 1 through 4. God gives, it's the Pentecost when the disciples are filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's read this together. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. 
And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This filling of the Holy Spirit is not some random occurrence. God promised this will come, that this will happen. Let's read John 14, 15 through 17. It says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Uh, will be in you. So Jesus told this to his disciples. There will be a helper that will come uh, to be with you, because he's not going to be with them forever, right? He already knew what, what Christ was going to do on earth, right? What he was going to do as a Christ. He will die, he will resurrect, he will not always be with them. But what did he say? He will ask the Father for the helper. Why is he the helper, right? What is he helping us in, right? For us to follow God's desire, ultimately, for world evangelism. And that's exactly what happened, right? So Holy Spirit came upon them. They're speaking in tongues. So, uh, you know, it was a tongue if, of the 15 different nations, right, each in their own native language. So they understood, right, what they were saying. Even though, uh, you know, they don't know how, you know, they never learned about how to speak all these different languages. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, they were able to uh, be un understand them in their own language. Let's read Acts 2, 5 through 6. What is the purpose of all the blessings, the purpose of God's work in our life, of the filling of the Holy Spirit even, is world evangelism. So verse 5, it says, Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. They didn't go out, right? to find all these people. They were speaking about God's work, and uh, you know, they, were here, they heard them, and they gathered. Right? So, how was, um, what was the content of what they heard? Number two. What's the content of God's work? And that's in Acts 2, verse 36. Let's read verse 36. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. And in verse 37 to 38, let's read this together. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What is the content of God's work? It's that Jesus is the Christ. Not only that Jesus is the Christ, what happened afterwards? They realized that, Oh, we killed the Christ, the one that we were waiting for, the answer that we were waiting for, that God had promised from the very beginning. What are we going to do? And they gave them the answer. Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. We need to receive Christ as our Lord, as our Christ. When we go to evangelize, we, we mentioned this before, when we go out to evangelize, we're not just telling people Jesus is the Christ. They'll say, so what? We're going to say that Jesus is the Christ, and you need to accept him as your Christ, as your answer. He's the only answer for your life. He's the answer for our life. He's the answer for their lives. And that's what is the content that God wants to share in God's work of world evangelism. So let's confess together at this time. And not just here today, but may you continuously confess this every day. Jesus, let's confess together. Jesus is the Christ, the answer of my life. Jesus is the Christ, 
my one and only answer. May you confess this every day, especially when you have uncertainties, when you have problems or hardships. Remember, Jesus is the Christ. He's the answer for your life. You know, uh, as an assistant pastor, and I'm sure uh, many, you know, some of the pastors too, um, it's very sad for us when we see other people not holding on to Christ, right? Because we have the answer. We're like, if only they held on to Christ, if only they knew who Christ was for their life, they did not have to worry, they do not have to suffer in this problem. But they're losing hold of Christ, right? Think about the people in the world, people at your schools. They're, on the outside, maybe they look fine, right? Maybe you think that oh, everything, everything's okay for everyone around me, you know, and maybe you think they're living better lives than you. If you look deep in their lives, they're suffering and they're oppressed inside of Satan. It's just they don't show you, right? Kind of like what Pastor John said. It's like everyone is suffering. They just know how to mask it. They just know how to look like they're fine, right? Don't be deceived by what you see. They're suffering. They need Christ. And we have the answer. May we become those who can share this answer to them. Let's read Acts 2, verse 39. Who is this promise for? It's for everybody. Uh, but there is one condition that we need, is that we have Christ. So let's read verse 39. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Again, world evangelism is not our work. It's God's work. When we go out into our field, when we go out into our schools, into our workplaces, it's not something that we do. It's something that God does. It's him attaching those he has already been working in their lives for a long time, and he has, they are now ready to meet you, who has the gospel, who has the answer that they need to hear and receive. So, you know, evangelism, we don't have to be worried Right? It's not about how, how can I say this <laughs> correctly. <laughs> okay, how am I going to meet the people that would want to hear this? Right? How are we going to determine that? That they're ready. We don't know. That's why we go out. God has everything prepared. We go out. Once God attaches those people to us, we raise them up as the disciples, those who know Christ, those who believe that Christ is the answer, and those who want to also now share that to those in their field. And that's how world evangelism takes place, right? It's not just the, uh, you know, God is work, wants to work through all of you, not just the pastors, right? You know, I cannot go to each of your schools. Pastor John cannot go to each of your schools. Pastor, we cannot be going to every single place of your work field, right? Who's going to share the gospel in your field? God wants to use you. You have the gospel. You have the power to share the gospel and to save the lives that are lost, that are under Satan. So we know what the purpose of God's work in our life is. All the blessings, all the, you know, even the filling of the Holy Spirit, even giving us the gift of prayer, all of that, the purpose is for world evangelism, to save souls. Yes, uh, one of the things that is lost in America is they focus on the blessing. They focus on their own hardship, their life. They want to live a better life, right? But they're losing hold of is the purpose of God's work. It's to be used by God as a witness, as those who, who give the answer of Christ to the world. So we know what is the purpose. We know what is the only content we need to hold on to, which is Jesus Christ. So what is the result? What is the result of God's work? Again, why? Is it, uh, it's not our work, it's God's work. What is the result? What will we see in our lives? Let's read Acts 2, verse 40 through 41. 
What happens? 3,000 disciples arise. Let's read verse 20, 40 through 41. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. We're not going to be here forever. Our, our lifespan, if it's long, let's say it's 100 years. God has been doing this world evangelism since the beginning. And he wants to continue it on for the future generations. This is the result. He will raise up through us. He will open the doors through us to the 3,000 disciples in your field that will continue to evangelize, that will continue to proclaim this gospel. You know, last week we mentioned about God. He will never yield to his work of world evangelism. Right? What we need to not forget is, uh, you know, world evangelism is not um, uh, going to steal something from you. We sometimes think of it that way. Uh, we think, okay, if I give my life to world evangelism, then I'm not going to be able to do this. Right? I'm not going to be able to do that. Right? I won't be able to hang out with my friends. <laughs> I won't be able to uh, uh, build up a life for myself. You know, maybe get a big house or whatever it may be. Have a successful career. What we need to not be deceived by and realize is this is for our benefit. World evangelism, God wants to continuously bless us, and that blessing is found inside of world evangelism. Right? Why does he want, again, what is the purpose of God's work, of God's blessing in our life? so we can be used for world evangelism. And for us that are not, right, um, inside of world evangelism, that are in the world, actually what he's going to do is bring a problem. <laughs> Why? To wake us up, to realize, hey, come back here, right? Where you're going actually is the way to destruction. I hope you can realize that as you think about your life. That's one of the realizations I came to. What we think is good for us, ultimately, is from the world, is from Satan. If it's from Satan, what's going to happen? We'll be destroyed. What, that's what he wants, right? That's his purpose. That's the purpose of Satan's work. Destroy us. To have us be in oppression, to be suffering, to spread that suffering to everyone around you. That's not what God wants. He wants to restore us and everyone around us, our families, our friends, our schools. And for us, what is the covenant that we hold on to, that our church holds on to, to save America and Latin America? May that be what you ask in your prayer that God will give you the heart for. So we say evangelism is God's work. But there's one thing God gave us that we can do, and that's prayer. That we can be aligned to what God desires, that we can ask him that his work would take place in our life. He's given us prayer. So I'm going to write this down, and may you pray this throughout the week. This is my prayer as well. First, may you pray that evangelism can be yours. It's not something that somebody else does. Eventually, one person in our church will do. <laughs> right? Whether it's a pastor or maybe the people sitting around you, oh, maybe God will use them. No, God wants to use you. May you pray, may evangelism be mine. Right? May God give me the heart for evangelism. And we cannot do evangelism with just our heart. We need to have the correct content. We have to have the correct answer. So may we confess Jesus is the Christ. May we confess Jesus is the answer to our life. Every single day. Why every single day? 
One, God doesn't just want to work one day in your life. God doesn't want to just bless you one day of your life. God wants to bless you for your entire life. Right? So we need to hold on to Christ every day. May you also pray, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Now, maybe you don't know what that's like because you never had this take place, right? Then maybe you can ask, God, fill me with the Spirit. I don't know what that is, right? So help me to see. <laughs> that can be your prayer topic, right? It's the truth. I mean, I don't know the gospel fully. Nobody knows the gospel fully. We come to know it deeper and deeper. So maybe you're at a point where, God, I don't know what the gospel is. I don't know what it means that Jesus is a Christ, that he's the answer for my life. God, show me what that is. May I be able to have that in my life. Why do we pray for all these things? So that the doors, not only of our life, will be open, but that the doors to the 237 nations will be open, right? And again, we, are, we, we focus on, you know, saving 237 nations. That's God's desire. But within that, for us to stand as witness, he wants to revive our life too. They go hand in hand. Don't just focus on one or the other. They go together. This is God's promise for you. When you hold on to Christ, force of darkness will be bound in your life. Do you guys believe that? Force of darkness not only in your life will be bound, but also in your schools, in your workplaces, in your family. May you believe that and pray. And hold on to this as our hope. As our blessing, disciples will arise in your life. Those who will walk with us to spread the gospel, those who will continue on in the places that we cannot go, God will raise up the disciples in your life. God will attach you guys, uh, to you guys, each and every one of you, disciples. What's the one condition? We're holding on to Christ. We're holding on to God's covenant, God's desire. So let's pray at this time. Exactly what we have here. We're going to have a time where each of us can pray at this time. These prayers. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for giving us the answer of Christ in our life. Father, Lord, we confess that Jesus is the Christ. He's the answer to all of our life. He's the answer to the world, the 237 nations. He's the answer to our families. He's the answer to our friends. He's the answer to our schools, our co-workers. Heavenly Father, may we not forget this. May we hold on to Christ every single day. Lord, through today's word, you reveal to us your purpose has been the same from the very beginning. It's not so that we can receive blessings. But even those blessings is for the purpose of world evangelism. Lord, if there's any of us that do not really have the heart for world evangelism yet, may you work in us. Lord, we believe if this is your desire, you'll give us the heart. So we pray, we ask, may you give us the heart to do your work, to save the souls that are lost in the world, to save those who are suffering needlessly without knowing Christ. Like, Lord, we believe for that sake, you want to raise us up. You want us to be the witnesses of Christ. So we pray, Lord, throughout this week, starting today, may we experience the power of Christ in our life. May we experience all the forces of the darkness being bound and crumbling. Lord, may we come to really know who is Christ. Who is Christ to us? Not just something we know, may we really come to meet you. May we really come to confess in our hearts that you are the only answer for us. 
Lord, we pray for the world, especially America and Latin America. You have given us this covenant. Lord, Heavenly Father, may you attach to us the disciples that you have already prepared. May we not be afraid to go out and speak this gospel. May we have a boldness to share this answer. Lord, we thank you that you want to use us as the evangelist. May you continue to work in our lives. May you use us, send us wherever you want us to go in our lives to meet with those who need to hear this gospel. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. At this time, let's give praise. Can I have everyone stand up? And as we praise, may we really come to praise God with our hearts. Focus on God alone.
die for such as us. And every day we're changed into your image more and more. Yes, by the cross we've truly been transformed. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. save us, but you want to save our entire families, you want to save our entire schools, you want to save our entire workplaces, you want to save all of America, all of Latin America, you want to save all the 237 nations. That is the work that you've come to do. Lord, we pray that we would be those who you may use, even a little bit, that we may share this gospel to whoever we meet. We have shared this answer of Christ to whoever we meet. Lord, may we share this gospel first in our own life by confessing and holding on to Christ as our answer. And may that be shared to others through our lips. And may the disciples be raised in our life. May we have the doors of evangelism open one by one. We believe you'll do this in our life and we thank you and pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.